Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Um, today is just gonna be a real quick go over of a few tips and tricks that I have learned for digital planning with GoodNotes. The planner that I use is one that I made and I'm one of the minority, I believe, who actually plans um, in portrait orientation. Now I have a huge background in paper planning. I've done the Erin Condren's, I've done the um, Happy Planners, the Recollections Planners from Michaels, the Blue Sky Planners from Walmart. I've been through them all. Um, when I discovered digital planning um, in May of this year, I was just blown away by how much you can do, how similar it can be to a paper planner, and how much more convenient it is. I'm going to do a separate video um, listing all of my pros and cons of digital versus paper planning, but for now just know I'm converted. I love digital planning. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to touch on is one of the more difficult um, differences between uh, paper planning and digital planning for me has been the ease of working with your um, with your stickers. Now I've been creating my own stickers for my digital planners for a while now mostly because there's not a whole lot out there yet. Um, this is kind of a new area and to be honest, I'm excited to be a part of it because there's so much happening in the digital planning community and I'm just, I'm so excited to be in it. So I'm going to show you how to crop a sticker. Um, for example, we'll take this uh, ombre checkbox here. We'll just pick up this purple one. We'll paste it here in the planner. And then we're just going to resize. Now, let's say that for this week, I, for this particular list, I only need four, a four heart or circle, as it were, checkbox. So what I would do is I would hold down on the item, hit edit, tap, hit crop. You want to make sure that rectangle is selected down here, and then you're just going to drag either from the top or the bottom if you want the lighter boxes or the darker boxes, and then hit done. And now I've got a four column or a four row ombre checkbox. Totally awesome. That is something obviously that you can do with um, digit or paper stickers with a pair of scissors. However, here I can go back here, hit paste, and now I still have another six row checkbox, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna pull in this lantern sticker this full box. Paste it over here. Now this is something that you can do with digital stickers that you can't necessarily do with paper stickers. So I have my my full box here. Now because I portrait orientation plan, my daily boxes are fairly small compared to the Erin Condren or the Happy Planner even where you have a full row per day. Um, but with for some reason digitally, I just, I have to have them portrait orientation. So I'm working with a lot less space, but I still love some full boxes. So what I do is I've created a set of overlay tools that I keep here in my sticker book. And I'm just gonna copy the full box version, go back to my planner, and I'm gonna paste. See how it changes and lowers the opacity of the full box? So I can resize if I wanna have like this style. Now this is what's great about this. I can keep it here, I can copy it, and then I can paste it again if I want even more space to write through. So now when I take my pen tool, it's visible on top of that full box. So one thing that I am a huge fan of from my paper planner days that I was having a hard time finding a way to do digitally is layering stickers. So if I come over here and I paste this planner sticker on top of this ombre box, for example, I'll just stick him right there. It, I used to believe that once you stuck something there, it was stuck there because you go to highlight him 
and you're going to move the entire set. But what I have learned is, and I'll zoom in so you can see this better, if you touch and hold on the sticker you want to move, this menu pops up. You then hit edit, and now you can move just that sticker. You can rotate, you can crop, and you're able to move it even if it is on top of another sticker set. That was a game changer for me for digital planning because when I started, I fully believed that, like I said, once you set something down, it was stuck there. So to be able to, and this was a tip I learned on accident actually, and I was so happy because that made it okay for me to digital plan. That was the thing that I was like, I don't know if this is for me because I like to move things, I like to change things up, but that right there was a game changer for me. Okay, and the last thing that I'm gonna show you guys is a lot of, there's a lot of information out there that says that the way to bring in a new cover for your, your planners, I'll use this one for instance, is to click this plus, or excuse me, click this square, these squares here, click this plus sign, click this thing, and then import I don't know that I have any in my Google Drive right now, is to do it this way, which is pushing down all of your other layers. When you're doing a portrait style planner, in other words, portrait orientation, that does work and it works fine and there's no problem there. However, but if you're working with a landscape orientation um, document or planner, like for example, this guy right here, that won't work. You can tell it I want this cut or this page to be my first page, so forth and so on, but it will not change it. However, what you can do is you can go into your, and I do this for all of my covers, by the way, just because I don't want to have to learn it a different way each time. But you go into your planner, make sure you're on the first page. Now for me, this one that I created has kind of a pseudo cover, so I'm just going to leave it as is. But if you wanted to have a new page as a cover page, you want to go plus, add page above, and then just whatever you wanted. I'll just select this grid for now. You have to do that step first because when you go to change the cover, go to these three dots here, go to more options, change paper template, and then down here at the bottom, you've got papers and you've got covers. When you go to covers, now this is a landscape planner, but if I can pull in this one and it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna change the current pages template? Yes, because I have a throwaway page that I pulled in. So I'm gonna say change it. And then it's gonna change it to this. And then on my main screen, it changed it to a portrait image. That does not change the orientation of the planner. It only changes the orientation of that page. That's the difference. Um, now to import um, covers into your templates is different. You have to be on this page here where you're just at all of your documents and you're gonna come down here to options. You're gonna go to template library, covers right here, edit. And then there's a little plus sign up here. You're gonna to wanna to hit the plus sign and then import your document or your cover from wherever you saved it. Google Drive, OneNote, Cloud Storage, or even the camera roll of your device. So that's where you're gonna pull from. And then once you do that, and again, I don't have one saved right here, but once you do that, it'll show up in this here, at which point you can change that cover to any document you want, and it'll store it here so that you can change it one week. Like say you have a, a Halloween themed one that you wanna use. You can change it for the month of October and then come back in here and change it to a different one in November. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found some of these tips useful. Like I said, there's not a whole lot out there yet is in the digital planning community as far as um, like little hidden gems and things like this. So um, if you guys can think of any others that I have missed, please leave a comment down below because I'm telling you, I am so into digital planning right now. Like. I don't even have a paper, I have a paper planner, but I have not planned in it since the beginning of May. 
because this is exactly what I'm looking for. So if you guys have any tips or any ideas that I have not listed here, please let me know because I'm always looking to up my digital planning game. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.